In early 2000, Albert M. Ranieri admitted he paid someone $6,000 to help him kill Greece businessman Anthony Vaccaro. While that accomplice drove the car, Ranieri says he fired 17 rounds from a 30 caliber weapon into Vaccaro's limo, striking him eight times. The May 5th killing followed two failed attempts involving Vaccaro's business partner, Tony Leonardo. It alleges in the in the plea agreement, there were a number of occasions where Ranieri planned to kill Vaccaro. Why did they want him dead? Well, I, I don't... Um, I believe Ranieri felt that Vaccaro was stealing from him. Leonardo has already admitted a minor role in the murder, but Ranieri's attorney says the facts show that Leonardo had more of a pivotal role. Mr. Leonardo is a very manipulative uh, person, and... Uh, while Mr. Ranieri takes full responsibility for everything he did, he's done, I think that your question is, you know, what about the two of them? I think, you know, Tony's a, a very shrewd, manipulative person. Ranieri today detailed his role in a series of crimes, including the 1990 heist of nearly $11 million from the AMSA armored car he was driving. And in a surprise confession, Ranieri says nine years later, he plotted along with Tony Leonardo to carry out two other AMSA heists, one in Cleveland with the help of this man, Anthony Del Monte. Turns out, though, Del Monte was an FBI informant. On these undercover tapes made with Del Monte's help, Ranieri admits to the theft. His guilty plea puts an end to a frustrating 12 years that the crime has remained unsolved. The amount of time that's involved in this, you can imagine the frustration and you can imagine the, uh, the fact that I think it says a lot to the task force, to the investigators, that they didn't give up. As part of the plea deal, the district attorney's office has agreed not to prosecute Ranieri in state court, where sentences for murder can be tougher. Remember, a federal court is quite different. Accomplices can testify against uh, other people, and you can get a conviction based on accomplice testimony. We did not have that, so we did not have sufficient information to indict him on the murder. Seventeen shots rang out early that May morning two years ago. Karen Lockhart heard every one of them. That was pretty scary. It's, it was very scary. But you knew, you knew immediately that there was no way anybody could have survived it. Lockhart lives on North Avenue in Greece, across the street from where Anthony Vaccaro was killed. His car ended up on her front lawn. And, and I was up to see the car go across the front lawn and because I could get to the wind by the time I got to the window. And it was just, it was very, very scary. Albert Ranieri Jr. admitted in federal court today he fired the shots that killed Vaccaro. Ranieri admitted trying twice before to lure Vaccaro to a spot so he could kill him, but chose North Avenue in Greece because he knew this was the way Anthony Vaccaro traveled home from work each evening, something we still don't know the answer to, why Vaccaro was killed. Why was he targeted? I don't know that answer. I don't know if I ever know that answer. What police knew from the start was that this was a planned hit. That's why federal authorities were called in. Are you more realistic? Karen Lockhart is just glad it's finally over. It's a relief to know that they really solved the murder. Patrice Walsh, WOKR, News Source 13. Nice. At the time of the AMSA robbery, Monroe County Sheriff's Major Neil Flood was captain of the detective division. And I asked uh, Lieutenant Broida, uh, he told me what had happened, and I asked him if we had any idea how much, and he got kind of a wry smile on his face and kind of pulled me aside and told me that I wasn't going to believe it, but it was somewhere in the neighborhood of $10.8 million. He knew immediately he had a significant case on his hands, and for several months it was a focused investigation working with the FBI. In this particular case, I would tell you almost every investigative person who worked on it uh, had strong feelings about who or whom may have been responsible, but there was never enough proof to put a case together that we really move forward. Flood says there came a time when the investigation went cold and there was little more the sheriff's department could do. But that doesn't mean he stopped wondering. You see an AMSA truck drive by because they're still out there. You, you know, you go to Wegmans, you see, you kind of think about it for a second or two. Um, 
I think most of us that worked the case had felt that we did the very best job we could do. And while Flood will not comment on the federal investigation, he will say this. Albert Ramirez certainly didn't commit this robbery by himself. That, that is an absolute fact. We know that for a fact. Kristen Miranda, WOKR, News Source 13. Albert M. Ranieri says he tried twice, unsuccessfully, to lure Anthony Vaccaro into a trap in order to kill him. In frustration, Ranieri paid an accomplice $6,000 to help him try again. In court, he admitted firing 17 rounds from a 30 caliber weapon, striking Vaccaro eight times. Why did they want him dead? Well, I, I don't... Um, I believe Ranieri felt that Vaccaro was stealing from him. But Ranieri's attorney says it was Tony Leonardo who wanted his former business partner killed. Leonardo pleaded guilty for his role and had planned to testify against Ranieri. But Ranieri says he won't implicate anyone else, including the driver of the car. He was willing to step up to the plate uh, and take responsibility for his conduct. Um, he did not other incriminate. And the plea agreement is what it is. Um, there's no cooperation involved in it. In federal court, Ranieri also admitted his role in the unsolved $10.8 million theft of an AMSA armored car. He was the driver of that truck. We learned in court he gave some of the money to Tony Leonardo. Much of that money was used to start Club Titanic, the business venture Leonardo shared with Anthony Vaccaro. In tapes secretly recorded by the FBI, Ranieri also admits to burning some of the cash. But court documents account for less than a million dollars of the money. He was one of a number of people who were involved in the robbery. And um, uh, it remains to be seen, I don't believe he had all the money. What happened to the rest? Uh, well, we, we have some idea, but I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, investigation, investigation will continue. It's open, absolutely. By 1999, Albert Ranieri was apparently so desperate for money, he plotted with Leonardo and this man to commit two similar AMSA heists. Turns out, Anthony Del Monte was an undercover informant for the FBI. Jane Flash, WOKR News Source 13. In 1990, Albert Ranieri stole nearly $11 million from the AMSA armored car he was driving. Instead of making him rich, he says it ruined his life. In a written statement, he told a federal judge the money caused a chronic sense of paranoia, which led to dangerous deeds, including a plan to deal cocaine with former Rochester lawyer Anthony Leonardo and the execution-style murder of Leonardo's business partner, Anthony Vaccaro. Everything re uh, evolved from when he took the money. He was trying to hide it. He couldn't spend it freely, so he turned to criminal activity to try to invest it. And then he killed Mr. Vaccaro, continued to deal drugs with the money, and then uh, eventually got caught. But there would be no apology, not even at the prompting of the judge. The sad thing uh, to me was that the defendant, when he was given the chance to say, and the judge basically prompted him to say, why don't you start by saying you're sorry, the defendant couldn't even say that, and that was truly pathetic. I think anything that somebody under these circumstances would say would not be appreciated at all. Albert Ranieri will be almost 70 years old before he is released from prison. Judge David Larimer had the final word. He told Ranieri, you are the kind of person that maximum penalties are built for. It is clear Albert Ranieri did not act alone in the 1990 robbery of an AMSA armored car or the murder of businessman Anthony Vaccaro. Yet when it comes to his accomplices, Ranieri goes to federal prison without naming names. We're not going to give up. We're going to continue. We believe other individuals were involved in both the homicide and the AMSA armored car robbery, and we're going to continue looking at it. For now, the feds are looking to Tony Leonardo, once a prominent local attorney. As part of a guilty plea, he agreed to testify against Ranieri. Now his role may grow. Um, money laundering of the Titanic, um, the homicide, um, the drug dealing that he was in, he 
participated in. He may be asked to give more cooperation, which might require testimony in the grand jury. As for all that money, Albert Ranieri admitted spending or destroying about a million dollars worth. The FBI has hinted in the past his partners in the heist may have gotten away with the majority of the cash. We, we have some idea, but I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, investigation, investigation will continue. It's open. Ranieri's father was also a suspect in the heist. The question remains whether he made any admissions to his lawyer who happened to be Tony Leonardo. Insurer Lloyds of London, which paid out nearly seven and a half million dollars on the AMSA claim, is hopeful. Well, we remain optimistic, uh, like I said, uh, but uh, it, the judge did make intimations today that there were others that might come before this court someday. I don't know where that, what that essentially means, but uh, I hope to find out more in, 